Good morning, everybody. <laughs> you guys are awake. I love it. Uh, so today we have a wonderful practitioner who is holding the light, holding the consciousness of this morning's um, message from Reverend Christian, and her name is Kathy Bacay. So give her a warm welcome. So together we are going to be lighting the light. So it starts off really tiny and then it gets really big. That's how fires go. So, um, ooh, that was hot. So um, we have so many wonderful things happening here at Seaside and it's so wonderful to know that we are in a community that is always happening. Like it's always happening here at Seaside. So I encourage you to check out your programs with the Inside Seaside that Marv has so wonderfully put together and he puts together every single week just so that we know what is happening. So let's start off with what's happening in February. February 17th, we are having the first ever New Thought-a-thon happening here at Seaside. Yeah, I can, hello, hi. It's a new thought-a-thon, it's gonna be so exciting. So put it in your calendar and prepare to call in February 17th from one to 5 p.m. It's a virtual and in-person open house. You'll get more details on that coming soon. So that's February 17th, you got it? When is it? That's right, okay. So we have Living Room Conversations happening the second Sunday of the month, beginning in February. And um, this is a perfect time to come together and have conversations that you wouldn't uh, likely have outside of these walls. So it's a safe space to talk about what you feel about, the con about things that are happening in the world. February 10th, we are talking about the America that we want to see. And Dr. Kathy Hearn will be leading these conversations. Again, it starts in February. January 27th, we have the annual Seaside Community Meeting that is happening here at Seaside um, after second service. So this is a great time to learn what is happening, um, it, what has happened throughout the year, and what is to come, and learning who is on our board. So that's February 27th, and I mean January 27th, January. 27th. January 25th, we have the Sister Spirit Groove Dance class. So if you like to move and wiggle and dance and do your thing, women, you are invited. That is January 25th, and it is um, being hosted by Callie and the Seaside Sisters, which, by the way, did the march yesterday. So give them a round of applause for getting together. We had a full-on flash mob happening. By the time I got there, they did it seven, 12 times already, and I got there at 10, 10.30. So they were just wonderful. So they're, thank you, Callie, for putting that together and getting that bus. Um, and education. So education st classes started last week, and it is not too late. If you want to take foundations with Reverend Christian, you can do so Tuesday night here at Seaside um, or on Thursday morning with Audra. So those two classes are still open and available for you. This is where I started, and then I am... Here I am today as PRAC 1, uh, <laughs> PRAC 1 term 2. So it's really exciting and it's a wonderful time to get to know you, who you are, and how to use these principles in your life. So that is, um, the sign-ups are in the family room. There is an education table. Go ahead and sign up. And lastly, we have a food truck here after second service. And I heard it was gourmet and uh, gluten-friendly and um, organic and all the good stuff, you know, all those good Popping words, that is that food truck. So it's happening after second service. Make sure to get your plate and stay after second service and have a conversation with us. We would love to get to know you even more. And with all that being said, we may now stand and greet our neighbors.
joy When fear won't let me be I choose joy Also shows being a redhead now. Hey, looking good, very feisty. That's it. We like that joy thing. Hey, good morning, Seaside. Woo, what a joy it is to be here with all of you this morning. We choose joy at Seaside. Sometimes people say, you guys are just too joyous around there. And I go, yep. <laughs> Not too much, yeah. but it's just everything excites me. I mean, I don't know if you were up early enough to see the moon this morning, but it was shining across the ocean. That white path from the moon across the ocean into our house is just an invitation. I feel like I want to become ethereal and just follow that. But tonight, right, we've got a, a big lunar happening, a red moon eclipse. Not like in the early a.m., but at a decent time. I appreciate that, God. Thank you. But uh, it, it's a wonderful opportunity. If you saw them a couple years ago, it's... You know, it's impactful. It's hard to put into words, but to watch the moon go red, it's uh, de definitely amazing. So anyway, hey, a lot of good's going on at Seaside, not only inside here on our campus, but the women, the Seaside sisters walked with the women of the world yesterday down in San Diego. I heard you applause that. Carolyn, I saw you had a nice color shot in uh, the online paper. In, were you wearing a blue tutu? Yes, you were the center shot, and it was taking it from the ground up, and uh, your name's in print, so uh, it, it, was, um, it was like, yeah, th those are people. Lori Mack, Reverend Lori Mack organized that flash mob. It was a powerful, powerful I experience for sure. Anyway, Seaside continues to create that because we put spirit first always, and we have uh, a practitioner emeritus here at Seaside. She has been uh, an emeritus longer. It takes 20 years to become emeritus, and she's been emeritus longer than she was <laughs> licensed. So anyway, it is the wonderful Kathy, Katie, and she is um, just consciousness in motion. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to invite everyone just to go into that stillness, into that silence, and as we hit that crystal bell, just let that vibration just take you deeper into the knowingness that God is good. And in that total recognition as that ever-loving presence of God, I know that that is all there is. There is nothing other than God, that God is the truth of all life. It is my life. It is the life of each one of us individually and collectively. 
as we have come together this morning to simply surrender into the fullness of all of that that is good, all of that that shows us that we are magnificence expression of God, and I know this to be so not only for each one of us, but also I know this to be ever so true for Reverend Christian Sorensen. I know that he is ever so blessed, ever so guidance, ever so directed, that all of that that comes through him this day is the word of God bringing forth that knowledge and that wisdom for each one of us to move into a higher level of our own magnificence. And it is already marked and known as being good. I have spoken and it is so. Be still and know that I Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Be still and know that you are God. Be still and Thank you, Katie. Ah, let's just breathe that in, family, yeah? Ah, what a joy it is to be here with all of you today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Audra Nicole. I'm a practitioner here at Seaside, and I'm also on staff behind the scenes, helping things keep going, keeping things in order. At this time of the day, uh, we like to do a reading each week from varying places. Um, but before I do that, if this is your first week with us, I want to extend a very special welcome to you. We haven't had the joy of meeting you yet, but we would love to meet you even more so. We're pleased that you're here with us and at the we have a welcome table at those doors, the very back, it looks like this. We have a welcome packet for you. Invite you to take one home, learn a little bit more about us. There's some wonderful gifts for you in there. Another thing to know about our community or to be reminded of is that one of the things that we do so very, very, very well is pray. We are a blessed community to have so many licensed practitioners here with us that pray for you all week long. So if there's anything weighing on your heart, heavy, that you would like released, or maybe you're ready to welcome in more good, whatever it is, we're here for you. And in your inside seasides that you have, there's prayer requests, and there's also a couple that look like this. We have a prayer box back here and in the hallway. So we invite you to let us love you up in that way. So this book right here, called Joyous Living Journal, I don't know if you've seen it before. We've got a couple lying around here. I know, I'm sure they have some in the bookstore if you would love to take one home with you today. This book was written by two of my beloved minister mentors, uh, Reverend Dr. Petra Wells, and a gentleman you may have heard of, Reverend Dr. Christian Sorensen. Have you guys heard of him? Yeah. Today I would love to read to you about the joy factor. Your life is intended to be joyous. 
the very cells and molecules and atoms in your being are vibrating in tune with life. Your whole life is the delight of the divine. Simply notice the spontaneous laughter of a child and you see the powerful joy that is within everyone, including you. And in the words of our beloved Ernest Holmes, there is a laughter of God, let us laugh it. There is a song of the universe, let us sing it. There is a hymn of praise, let us praise it. There is a joy of beauty, there is a deep abiding peace, let us experience it and let us begin. It is my pleasure to introduce you, Seaside, to our guest artist this morning. Angel Taylor is joining us again here at Seaside, and she has some original music to share with you uh, for the spirit. And also, in the break, she has some albums for sale out front. Make sure you stop by and say hello. And she also has a pre-release, so you can actually buy a record that is not yet in existence and get a copy of it. Uh, as soon as it comes out, first first orders, right? Okay, uh, with no further ado, Angel Taylor. Thank you. I, I'm everybody. I'll be Angel Taylor. <laughs> Understand this world sometimes stops me dead in my shoes. Blocks what I'm feeling while, and then your love comes through. I pray for people to put their difference aside. I think 
that is Angel Travis. Oh my goodness. Love comes through. That is what this whole message this morning is about. Ah, your love comes through. So true. Wow. Woo. That is like perfect for this morning's message because this morning's message is um, the way it works, unlocking your healing power. And as you may or may not know, what we are doing is aligning or partnering with centers for spiritual living across the country that who, during the first month of the year, go back to the basics as laid out by the founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, in his book, The Science of Mind. And we go through those introductory chapters. And last week, we were talking about the thing itself, and that was spirit, you know, our relationship to spirit, uh, what our experience of that divine presence is. So it is a real uh, experience when we mention the word God. So that was last week. And this week is, and the way that works, I'm, I'm, this is like I'm giving it away up front. But the way it works is... It comes through you. Just like uh, Angel was singing uh, to us, that is how spirit shows up in our life. It, it, it comes through us. And um, so James Allen, who um, at the turn of the last century came out with a book in 1903 called As a Man Thinketh, which was later rewritten to As a Woman Thinketh. And, um, but basically it said the same thing. He, what he wrote in there was, you are today where your thoughts have brought you, and you are tomorrow where your thoughts will bring you, which is what you know, master teachers have talked about. It's done and choose you believe. You know, what goes around comes around as you cast your bread upon the waters and back it comes. The secret cause and effect is like, whoa, that's a new piece of information. Right. You know, it, it, as within, so without. I mean, this is the way it works. And your healing power comes when you begin to recognize that there is a power greater than you that is moving through you. Change your thinking, change your life. There's a power in the universe for good, and you can use it. And we keep coming back to that same thing, but how do you use it? You know, Richard Bach, in, um, author of Jonathan Livingston Siegel, said, argue for your limitations. And sure enough, they're yours. <laughs> I mean, that, that's how it works. But that's what we tend to do is we begin to say, okay, this is how much good I can embrace in my life. This is how much I think I really um, can conjure up, which is really the level of your self-worth or your value, saying this is how much I, I can you know, get into my life. And our body responds to our thoughts. You know, there's plenty of research. There's volumes on the shelves of research that shows that our thoughts, um, you know, change our attitude. They change us physiologically. Uh, they begin to get our heart racing and beating. Our negative thinking really controls the way uh, we move in this world and the way we act. You know, whether I stutter or, or forget my lines or, or uh, you know, the, the heart starts racing and people take polygraphs. So scientifically they say, you know what? The blood pressure goes up. The heart starts racing. Your hands get clammy. Uh, you know, there, there's things that are going on physiologically because of your thinking. You've got people like uh, Joe Dispenza working with the brain and, and Bruce Lipton in uh, biology of belief, talking about epigenetics, uh, which scientifically are showing how we can change our DNA. I've like so long heard people say, well, that's hereditary. You know, that's what I was born with. That's the way it came. Well, they were showing that, you know, at the molecular level, it's mostly all space. You know, the science is showing what's in space, your energy, your thoughts, and the science is showing how it can change it. That is how we take the power to heal in our life is to recognize that we are not bound by what has gone before us. But there is power in that spirit as it shows up in our life. That's how it's working here, is it's showing up at the level of your belief. You may have heard this story. It's been around for a while. It's definitely in our culture of Nick um, Sitzman. He was a strong, strapping uh, train yardsman who, who worked the trains in the yard. I guess that's what a yardsman does. <laughs> Anyway, um, one afternoon, uh, the foreman, it was his birthday, so he gave all the guys the day off. And, and Nick's very conscientious guy, always worrying about stuff. And, you know, he was checking inside a refrigeration box car. And as the guys were closing up and locking up, they locked him in the refrigeration box car. Yep, that was his, oh no. And so he started freaking out. And, and you know, his, his mind works. He knows the numbers. He knows the temperature. You know, that the box car is zero, gets down to zero degrees and the doors are closed. Um, you know, how much air, all sorts of things. And so he just started pounding until his hands were bleeding, yelling for help until he was hoarse. And finally, he just started to slow down and could feel his body getting cold and chilling out. And he took out his pocket knife and 
carved the last message you know, to, to his wife and his child. You know, I'm, I'm going cold, getting numb. And in the morning, when the guys came to the yard and they were opening up the boxcars, they found Nick dead. And the autopsy showed he had all the signs of hypothermia, uh, uh, freezing to death. But the boxcar refrigeration wasn't operative. It was 55 degrees when those guys opened it up. And yet, physiologically, his body responded to freezing. That is the power that we have in our body. Not only can you change the DNA, at least what science is telling us is possible, or, 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 you, or you die because of your thinking. That is the power that we're operating with, and you know, that's pretty quick, but I mean, we know body responds quickly, right? Have you ever been embarrassed? How long does it take for you to turn flesh and go red? Boom! Pretty quick, you know? You, you, you get excited, you see somebody you haven't seen in a while. How long does it take for you to get excited? You know, things respond quickly within the, the physiological aspect of your being. And so what's important is to recognize that we don't want to give our power away, that life responds to us at the level in which we believe. And our founder, Ernest Holmes, um, who wrote this book, The Science of Mind, and so what we study, our teaching is The Science of Mind. It's based upon his book, The Science of Mind. Now, uh, we say we're religious scientists practicing the science of mind, and, and the name of uh, you know, the organization is Centers for Spiritual Living. And so what Ernest wrote in his book, Science of Mind, came out in 1927, and uh, he, he said, you know what, this is a correlation of the, the laws of science, revelations of religions, the insights of philosophy, and it, it's not a revelation to me, but rather there seems to be this common thread of truth that's shown up through the great religions. He didn't believe that there's only one path to the mountaintop or there's only one uh, philosophy to understanding spirit. He believed there were many. And so what he shares here seems to be very transdenominational. So, you know, in terms of healing, you know, you don't, can't only heal within your uh, wheelhouse. You know, a lot of people say, I can only heal if you, you know, do this. Well, you, know, you don't have to believe his way. But what I want to share with you from the chapter we're working on called The Way It Works, he wrote... If God is to interpret itself to us, it must interpret itself through us. And spirit can make no gift that we do not accept. See, if spirit's infinite, then all the gifts are, are there for you, but only the ones that you can embrace are the ones you get. He goes on to say that the thing then, meaning God, which we spoke about last week, works for us by working through us and is us always. It can't work for us in any other way. It spreads itself over the whole universe and shouts at us from every angle. Hey, here I am. You know, help yourself. I added that. But <clears throat> it can become power to us only when we recognize it as power. You know, if you have a bunch of money in the bank, you don't know it's there. It's not any good to you, right? See, it can only become power to us when we recognize it as power. Therefore, our belief, our thinking, you know, sets the limit of a demonstration of a principle which of itself is without limits. It is ready to fill everything because it is infinite. So it's not a question of its willingness nor its ability. It's entirely a question of our receptivity. Spirit's infinite, yes? Yes. You're part of that everything? Yes. Then the limitation is dictated by you because you're part of that everything. See, the, the way it works is it shows up at the level in which you choose to embrace, to embody, and to recognize in your life and in your world. It, it's how that tends to work in our world. And so, you know, if it's not happening at the level in which you want in your life, it's an opportunity to take a look at it and say, what's going on here? Because I'll tell you, it, it's, it's a, actually it's a case of misidentification. You're not recognizing that you truly have the ability, the capability, and the worthiness to experience the greater good, the greater love, the greater abundance, greater health, the perfect balance. Whatever it is you're working on, the ease and the grace or what have you, it is this misidentification that forgets that spirit is everything and you're part of that. And so it can show up in your life at the level in which you believe. And what needs to shift here is your thinking. And so what happens a lot of times is that we begin to beat ourselves up on the inside. Well, because I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. And we got this inner critic. And some people's inner critics are very loud. And, but what I, you want to experience a shift, a subtle shift, if you could change your thinking from inner critic to inner coach. Right? Uh, this is my coach. You know, this is my, my spiritual mentor that is giving me some insights here. If anybody's ever done drama or theater, you know that the director sometimes can be brutal. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's not to hurt you. It's to give you something else to look at and to think about. I'm doing a homiletics class right now, working with ministerial students to become uh, proficient uh, speakers. And it's like, you know, they, they, they tease me that I'm like Simon Cowell. I'm like so mean to them. And I said, no, I'm not a critic. I am the director, the, the one who is holding up a mirror and saying, you may want to take a look at that. That's what your life is doing. It says, hey, it's not working here. Take a look. Because there's something going on. You can beat yourself up and say, I'm not worthy, good enough, title, you know, my past, and come up with all the excuses. Or you can shift and say, okay, my coach here, my inner coach is saying, I can do something different with this. You know, because there is something that responds to that. It's a subjective, if you would. Um, um, and our subjective is that creative factor. It is that which holds the sum total of everything we've thought and we've done. It's sitting in there, and the subjective is right below the objective, right? It's sub. It, it's, right, it's right underneath that. The subjective is subjective to the objective. The subconscious is sub to the conscious mind. The subconscious will always respond to the conscious mind. But first, it's going to continue in the position in which it was pointed. It's going to work 24-7 to produce that level of your self-belief and your acceptance. That's what it's going to do. It's going to dig in the heels 24-7. It's going to attract or repel whatever supports that level. And if you're going to drop something else in there, you've got to recognize it's operating on the totality or the sum total of your previous thinking. And if you're going to shift it, it's very possible, but you have to be clear that I'm going to be able to move that. Because if I've been operating that I can't afford this, the subject that says, absolutely, you can't afford it. I get it. You know? And this is why. Look at your checkbook. But if all of a sudden your conscious mind says, well, I'm done with that level of thinking. I'm going to um, you know, drop in. Then I'm going to buy this. Then it begins to figure out the how, because the subjective is tapped into that infinite. It always will figure out the ways and the means, because the law responds. It's done unto as you believe, as we talked about. What goes around comes around. The bread is cast upon the water. Uh, cause, you know, you heard it all five minutes ago. You know, it's that. That is how it works. But what happens is we get dialed in to uh, the previous sense, and we don't see what is above it. We don't see the greater possibility of what is going on. And we're operating in this field of what, what we want to do is begin to get that mountaintop view. We want to have a higher view uh, than our own if we can't see our way through a situation. And you want to experience the power of healing, invite a higher way of seeing and knowing that is already available in the universal subjective, in the universal mind, that can drop that image to you if you can hear but so often is we get caught up in running on the wheel. On, it's not working. Can't see it. There's not a way. I don't know. Did, did you guys see this video that went viral? I think this week. It was a four-minute video. Um, a guy had a, a cellular phone. Not a cellular. He had a rotary phone. And he offered it to two teenagers. He did it to a bunch of them. But the clip is of two teenage guys. And asked them. He gave them four minutes to dial uh, this n number. And it's pretty funny, all four minutes. But it was got the cut down version to one minute. So these two young men were asked to dial a number on a rotary phone for the first time they'd seen one. Here are two 17-year-old boys confronted with an antique from a bygone era. A rotary phone. You have four minutes to dial that phone number. Jake and Kyle Bumstead were challenged to make a phone call on a rotary phone under four minutes. Oh no, zero's all the way over. Oh. How about restart? Wait a minute. Take it for. We have to pick up the phone and then do it. Put the phone to your ear. What do you hear? What does that sound like? Mm. The resulting video has older internet users either laughing or crying at how much times have changed. If this was zero. Then, wait, wait, wait. There's, 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 there's a second Look, one. Watch out, watch out, watch out. The second Is this one correct? Zero? Bring it all the way around and then, and then like, what's with all the holes though? Oh, it's a great oh. question. <laughs> is. Before you laugh at their effort, these two boys can probably show most of us a thing or two about how smart TVs work. 8500, 8500. We're done. Oh, you did it? Yeah, no, I didn't. When you don't know, you don't know. 
And then you get caught up in your thinking that this is how it is, whether it's with your body, whether it's a relationship, whether it's with work, whether it's your finances, it, it doesn't matter what it is. And there is an answer. We're all, we know how to do that. And that's what you want to do because what happens so often, people get caught up in life and they get caught up in the rat race. They try more aggression. You know, they try more of the same. They try intimidation. They will uh, exploit. They will bully. They will lie. They will manipulate. They will do all sorts of things to overpower. And the way to get out of that rat race is to invite a higher vision to lift you above where you've been operating. Say, how does this work? You know, there, there's got to be a way, Spirit. Let me see how I get through this. I mean, I love Lily Tomlin's line. Um, she said, you know, the problem with the rat race is even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat, you know? <laughs> and so what we want to do is get quiet and go to a little bit higher place. You know, and in the quiet mind, you begin to, to hear Spirit speak, if you would. See, the way it works is through you. So, so often we're looking for the idea out there, but if you're in that quiet place and you're walking along the beach, you see a pattern in the sand, it's like, oh my goodness, like that triggers something. It's like, that's just the piece I was looking for. Yeah, it, it's, or you know, you're starting to question, am I really worthy to get out of this rat race or this ratty situation? And boom, you know, the wind hits you on the side of your face, and you get, yeah, I, I'm good. Yeah, I, I am worthy of doing that or, or you hear the the geese honking in the dark of the night with this answer that you're looking for and all of a sudden you begin to be the recipient but all of us but what happens so often to us is rather than being available we want to take control this is how i'm going to get it this is how people are going to behave this is how it's going to work and as we do that we just dis associate ourselves with that subtler energy that comes from the sand mandala that God gave you. All you see now is a bunch of lines in the sand that mean nothing to you. All you're dealing with now are leaves that are blowing in the wind and making a mess because you have shifted, because you want to be able to say how this is going to show up in my life. That's not the way it works. It works because of the level of your consciousness. It works through you. And you'll be thinking, ah, those things just coincidences or accidents along the way. But when you move to that place of of a quiet mind and recognize that it is, you know, my thoughts that bring me to where I am today and it's my thoughts that are going to take me to where I'm going tomorrow, I begin to recognize that bark of the dog across the street is pointing me in the direction I've been looking for. That's how it works. It, it, it's through you in a way in which you are able to embrace it. And so rather than getting caught up in the rat race and becoming aggressive and superior and condescending and all those other kinds of things, you begin to be available for that presence of God that is showing up, not only for you, but for the ones that you are with. And when things are going not in the direction, I love what Martin Luther King shared, and he taught, you know, we're celebrating his birthday on, on uh, Sunday, or tomorrow, you know, a wonderful civil rights leader who really shifted the consciousness of our country to, to understanding of equality. And um, one of the things that he said that I believe um, there are those who are self, I believe that those who are self-centered tear things down, but those who are other-centered build them up. Right? Those who are self-centered will tear things down trying to make it the way they think it should be. But those that are other-centered, looking outside of themselves, begin to see, they begin to understand. And so what happens so much in life is that we are brought to the point where we get to decide, am I going to um, like control and own, or am I going to connect and belong? You know, we, we get to this like crossroad sometimes in our world that, um, you know, am I going to isolate myself or, or build a bridge? Yeah. As a boy, one of the things I did as a boy, and maybe boys do this, is I would take things apart. It's kind of a boy thing, I think. I, I don't know. But, you know, I like, used to like to take things apart. I wouldn't necessarily like to put them back together. But you take them apart to see how it works, right? I mean, that's the purpose of taking things apart. And if I do put it back together, there's always extra pieces. I mean, it even happens today with the vacuum I did not too long ago. There's, like, there's extra pieces that are not needed anymore. And, and, <laughs> And it's kind of in our nature as we take things apart so we can understand them 
and, and that's valuable sometimes. Sometimes we do need to uh, disengage from a bond uh, or an association to experience greater freedom. But what I've tended to notice with counseling, and a lot of times people come and counsel, and they want to take the pieces, and they're going to look at this piece, and they're going to look at this piece. And, you know, there's value to all that. But the healing comes when there is a return to the wholeness, when you can get that mountaintop view, when you can begin to catch a view of that one that can see more than you can see. All of a sudden, you begin to see the interconnection connectedness of it all because we are all interconnected in this infinite realm and as i begin to begin as i begin to expand my awareness as opposed to picking it apart and just microly getting into this situation i decide you know what i am going to unite connect bond and begin to recognize that it is as i connect with my fellow journeyers that i come to realize that What's important is to bring me to the situation here. It's not what's coming back that makes the difference in life. It's what I'm bringing. There's this wonderful poem by Kent Keith, and he is an American writer of higher education, though he entered in through the legal world as an attorney. But he wrote this poem called Anyway. said that if you're kind and people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives be kind anyway what you spend years building someone could destroy overnight build anyway the good you do today people will often forget tomorrow but do good anyway give the world the best you have and it may never be enough but give the world the best you have God anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Mm. Mm. It's between you and God. And the way it works is through you. That's it. And so as the blood that circulates through our body, it, it gives us uh, our vitality. You know, the water, it passes through the gills of a fish to keep it alive. It is the dance of the spirit that is through us that gives us the aliveness. It gives us the joy. It gives us the sense of value and contribution. It is as we begin to honor that dance of spirit that is within our heart and that is within our soul that we're able to to contribute to the world that we're in, that we're able to make a difference, to allow that dance of spirit is like that, that fish in the water. I love what Kabir said, that he laughs every time he hears that a fish is thirsty in the water. You know, it, it's like, it, it, I don't want to say it's funny, it's actually kind of sad when people are seeing that, you know what, um, I, I, I don't see spirit anywhere. I, I feel trapped in my life when the truth is you're infinite. We talked about that, you know, spirit is infinite, that's what you are. You know, and to wa- hear people talk about how lonely they feel in a world with 7 billion people, that for some reason they're pushing away the very love and the dance of God that wants to move through them for whatever that reason may be. And it is painful to, to watch individuals who uh, the very thing that they're looking for in their life, uh, the love that they want to experience that is right there, they have got a fear to embrace it, to drop their shield and become vulnerable, to experience the presence of God and dance with God in the rawness of their being. You know, I used to have a bird um, called Freebird. Not a best name for a cage bird, but, <laughs> y- you know, it was the 70s. And, um, a- and uh, this bird I had for 20 years as a parrot. And it lived with me as a kid, and it moved out with me when I was a teen, and it was with me at my first church in uh, Ventura. Um, and nobody really liked this bird because he squawked, he woke them up, he chewed on furniture, he ate books. And, but he and I had a good relationship. And uh, <laughs> they weren't my books, you know. But, um, 
Anyway, so when I moved to Hawaii, you know, Freebird was going to Hawaii with me, and uh, Dana and I were having fun at this first service because back in those days, things were a little laxer. And so, I, I mean, it's not like I really smuggled him on the plane because I put him through the, uh, the radiation, the thing, you know, the x-ray machine, you know. And so he was in this little box, and he came through, and they said, there's a bird in there. I said, I know. Is everything okay with him? And they said, yeah. You know, and, and so I, I took him on the plane. I kind of snuck him under my thing and put it under the seat. He was real quiet. Then the plane was delayed, you know, and here he is. Now everybody's starting to chat, and everybody's coming a little more relaxed, and he starts squawking, you know, from under the seat. So anyway, he and I have some, had some history. And, um, but, so when I got to Hawaii, I was feeling bad for putting him through all this. And we had a little tree in the, in the backyard, and I'd been reading a book that, you know, parrots like trees. You know, that's their natural habitat. So the next day I was excited, you know, welcome to Hawaii, you know, here's your tree, his wings are clipped, so, you know, everything's okay, and, right, you know, hold him up to the tree, and he doesn't move, and you know, I kind of shake him, you know, push him, and he won't come, and then he runs up my arm, and sits on my shoulder, kind of cuddles in where he feels safe, and I was like, free bird, yeah, this is a tree, and you're a bird, and birds are supposed to like trees, you know, he looks at me like, well, what are you talking about? You know, you're a bird, which is real tough to tell a pet it's a pet when it thinks it's a, a person, if anybody's had a pet like that. But, you know, I, I'm saying, you know, your ancestors lived in trees, free bird. Yeah, it, it's like you, you're supposed to love trees. And, you know, if you're not going to do it for me, do it for your ancestors. You know? <laughs> and he crawled back, and that, he never quite made it out to the trees. The, uh, so... 20 years later, though, when Kelly and I were living in Del Mar, uh, or after 20 years, uh, we did leave the door open, his wings weren't clipped, and he joined the wild pack of parrots in Del Mar, so I trust he lives in the trees there now. But, uh, but, but I share that story because, you know, our, our nature is to love. You know, our, our nature is love, and all the time, life is offering us the opportunities to love, to be loved, to connect, to bridge, to unite, to be together, to understand and feel and sense the bigger picture here. And what we're doing is like, Freebird, I'm not going up there. But you like trees. No, I don't. You know, you like love. No, I don't. Leave me alone. You know, <laughs> the way spirit works is it wants to dance through you. And what just is your, the passion, the turn on is spirit's joy of expression as you. You've been given this gift to bring to this world. You have got your dharma, your purpose, your passion. You've heard me tell you before that <clears throat> spirit's not going to have you do anything you don't like. You know, if you don't like blood and gut, spirit's not going to have you be a paramedic. You know, it doesn't work like that. You know, you will be on track to do what it is that excites your soul and allows the spirit to dance through you. You've got to listen to that. You've got to listen with that quiet voice. The way it works is it works through you. What do you see with the wind kissing your face? What is it you feel when someone is urging you to take a higher step and to step up? What do you do when you feel the challenge? You get into that fighting mode and aggression. Do you shut down or do you choose to ask for a higher vision here? Because there's always a higher perspective because we're dealing with that which is infinite. You're part of that. So that greater possibility is always available to you if you can get quiet enough to listen to it. And the way you, you can do that is ask. Here's a question. Here's a, a take home for you. Is you ask yourself, is what I'm doing here really hurting? Or does it feel right? Does it feel good? Is what I'm about to do here, is it moving me closer to my dream or my goal? Or is it moving me away? Is what I'm doing getting me where I want to go with the joy and the love, the, the compassion, the kindness? Or is it getting me further away because of my behavior going on here? See, the way it works is it's through you. It really doesn't care, you know, what, how you use it or what you do with it. It is looking to show up in your life at the level in which you choose to believe. You get to decide, how is this going to show up in my world? What's going on with this? I... I'm the place that spirit is showing up. You know, the, um, we're dealing with uh, the subjective, and it responds. We're dealing with the law of mind, and it responds. You know, there, there is 
So there is, uh, we're dealing in a universe of order. We talked last week about spirit. That's the spontaneity. That's the personalness. That is the touch. That is the love. And then we're dealing with the law aspect. The law of mind is what Ernest Holmes calls it. It's like there's an order. Not even spirit violates its order of things. And spirit shows up through um, uh, uh, evolution, uh, emergence, unfoldment, through a systematic unfoldment of the law of mind in the, in, a, in a sequential manner. Ernest Holmes says this isn't superstition any more than having superstition in the law of electricity is superstition or any laws of nature. It's what I choose to do with it. Ernest ends this particular chapter, Dr. Ernest Holmes. Excuse my lack of respect, Ernie. <clears throat> but um, he says on the last page of this chapter on the way it works, he writes that how much can one demonstrate? Well, we know that answer by now, right? If you've been listening, just what one can believe. How much can we see? How much can we accept? How much can we find in our consciousness? And whatever that is, that is how much we can have. What is it that you're embodying, he's saying? Then, knowing that the thing itself, that spirit, can work for us only by working through us, let us begin to accept today more good than we experienced yesterday. And to know that we shall reap the harvest of our fulfilled desires. Let us realize and work with the sound knowledge and the perfect faith that as high as we shall make our mark in the mind of spirit, so high shall be its outward manifestation in our material world. That is the way it works. As high as you make your mark, as high as you can embody, it's not saved for 1%. It is available to anyone who wants to step to a higher way of being and expression. There is a law of mind. This is the way it works. It's done unto you as you believe. It changes the body at the genetic level. At least that's what science tells us. It changes our attitudes in life. It changes the vibrational field that comes out. And so when something comes up like it, you notice and say, hey, out you go. You know, we are dealing not only with our subjective, we're immersed in the universal subjective. We are being bombarded by the corporate media's headlines, you know, and sometimes things come into our field of awareness. I have no idea where it came from. That sure isn't ministerial, Christian, you know, to be thinking or acting like that. But those I've been, I have heard called uh, their ants, automatic negative thinking. And when you have ants at the picnic, what do you do? You kind of flush them off and then you stomp on them. That's what I want you to do with your ants. That automated negative thinking. I want you to stomp on those ants and get rid of it just like that and leave them behind you. You didn't bring them to the picnic and you don't have to take them home. But you're the one who decides that. Spirit's moving through you. It's calling you. That's the way it works. It wants to dance with you as you. You know, this time of year, I don't know if you've seen them, the whales out front, you know, the, the whales are heading south, you know, for the winter to do their whale thing. And, um, you know, you, you can, uh, you know, sit at Swami's on a bench and meditate and look out and see the whales jump in or like to go to the little restaurant on the bluff in the park, in uh, San Leo Park uh, campground there. Or, um, you can even go to, I've seen them, you know, just sitting in Kai's watching the whales out there. But as I look at these whales, you know, they're heading down to the lagoons in Baja, and, you know, they're heading in from Alaska. You know, they're, they're, that's a long journey south. But, you know, I kind of get it. You know, if you're a whale going to the lagoons down there, you kind of keep the coast on your left, and you head south until you get there. <laughs> you know, I, I, I could get that one. But also what's happening this time is those whales up in Canada and Alaska are not only heading to the lagoons down there, but those... Uh, Beth Bond, mammoth, blue humpback whales are going from the top of the globe all the way out to the Hawaiian Islands. It's a 5,000-mile journey. And even James needs his GPS to find Hawaii when you're over the water. But these guys aren't even over the water. They are in the water, and there are no signs in the Mariana Trench that says, turn left here and go another 1,000 miles. There is something inside of them that takes them to the very same spot year after year, to that little seven-mile stretch between Maui and Lanai. I, I've been there many times this time of the year, and those huge whales are jumping and playing. You know, I love putting my head under the, the water and hearing the song of the whales and it's just truly magical but what we are also told is not only does the same 
species find its way to that seven mile stretch. But the very same whales, they, they know their flukes are like fingerprints. They're all I- identifiable. Hook up with the very same mates from the previous year and do their whale thing. And it's like, that's, now that to me is pretty amazing to think that those guys can go all that way the very same whales, the very same spot, find the very same partners. And then when they're done in the wintering in Hawaii, they go back to the, the food of the Alaskan waters up north. Now, how do these guys do, and women, whales, do this? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But what I do know, if there's something in those whales that can do that, there's something inside of me that can navigate me through uncharted territories, whether it's a quick trip down the coast and through my easy challenge, or, in, or if it's across a you know, 5,000 mile expanse of long journey where I don't know how I'm getting to where I'm getting, but I know that I, where it is I wanna be. It is this vision, it is this knowingness, it is this deep something that if I choose to quietly listen, that I can begin to experience the dance of the divine in me. I can begin to trust that and realize that the way it works is through me, and I'm going to begin to put my belief on a higher idea and consciously put it into my subjective that absolutely knows how to make it respond. It is 100% done and choose your belief, so what I'm going to do is begin to take ownership of my thought, stamp out those automatic negative thoughts that creep up and say, there is no space for your residency here. I am an expression of the divine. I've come to this world to do something, and the way it's going to happen is through me because God is everywhere, and I am that. God bless you as we do this together. Hey, let's keep it going as we bring Angel Travis back to our stage, along with the Seaside Band, of course. Uh, Though I may have awakened her in the last... Yes. Ladies and gents, one more round of applause for Angel Travis. Thank you. My uh, angel is, I know it, I'm just going to say it, but angels need angels. And uh, we, we all do. And my daughter really is mine. Like, I won't tell you the story now because i got to sing. But, uh, <laughs> but she's my angel. Yeah, she, she saved me. All right, so this is a, a song that Reverend Christian really liked last service. Take it in. afraid. He said, heck no, God's not a stranger. God is my maker.
Angel, Travis, woo! Beautiful songs that you created. Are those on your new album? They are. They are. Well, I'm excited to listen to that. Congratulations. Thank no, thanks. Um, anyway, hey, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to unite together in the givingness and the sharing of our gifts and our offering. We get to make that statement with spirit through our actions. Hey, this is the level in which I'm going to play. That's the way it works is through your actions. I mean, it's one thing to intellectually know something, but when you embody it, that is what it is you do. And so as you give, it comes back. But it's not why you do it. Rather, um, it's an extension of your consciousness. You're the activity spirit's having in your world. It, it doesn't care if it's big or as little. It's spirit is spirit. It just reciprocates. Um, and it's to the level you play. And so this is always an opportunity to stretch a little bit more and to expand a little bit more. So I invite you to look within your heart and to give from that place. I'd like to call our ushers forward at this time. And say thank you to this crew, and thank you to those who mail in your contributions. When you can't be here on a Sunday, is greatly appreciated, as well as those who participate with the Auto Tithe program. That regularity makes a profound difference in the ease for us to be able to operate. And those of you at home watching, thank you. I, I was just given a list of all sorts of individuals watching, and so we have Dane in the front row chatting with them live right now. So I see David Masters on there, and Sharon, and South Carolina, and Jeff, and Waleska, and Tina, and Tasha are always watching from home and and mark who shared it with his timeline and i just want to say thank you guys for sharing it when you can't be here watch it and when you share it with your friends it, it doesn't cost anything um, and it's it's our way in which we're helping to make a difference in the collective consciousness by individuals embracing these great teachings that give us the power to heal in our life and so this moment in which we give supports that wonderful wisdom of spirit that comes forth from here, and it comes forth in the level in which we collectively create. That's how it happens. You know, if there are more of us, we can, we can do more. And, and where we are, we do it wonderfully with ease and grace and joy and appreciation. And so I share this prayer of gratitude with the most generous of spiritual communities, knowing that this truly is a blessed moment where the divine unfolds its expression as our very life right here, right now. We become that place in which it touches down. That's the way it works, that we are that conduit through which the infinite takes form, and it shows up in our world in relevant kind of ways as we continue to remember spirit first always. So with joy, we give from that which has graced our life, and with joy, we begin to be the recipients of that ever-expanding greater good and joy that comes back. And so blessed that we are able to take our blessings and consciously send it forth to support spirit work it goes forth on those wonderful currents of joy and love bringing the gifts of good to everyone it comes in contact thank you father mother god for this opportunity to be able to share that expression of light in life so it is amen 
Together, let us say this affirmation of abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of Spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now. And those are your guys from Seaside. Nice job. And so as I stand before this bounty, I can feel the love and the caring and the compassion and the, the kindness and the abundance and the good and the life and the dance that has moved through each and every one of us as we have become that conduit of, of that divine expression, supporting an emerging greater, grander idea that is within the law of mind for truly the blessings of seaside is graced by this moment in time and space, how each of us have given the fruits of, of our work and our life. And so it's given in love. It is received in love. It is handled in good stewardship. And this love and this joy and this goodness is sent forth back, bringing blessings to everyone that comes in contact. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, for all the love that is. And so it is. Amen. All right. Hey, this is Tasha Lozano. This is your last week after three years of serving on our board of trustees. Thank you for the great so journeys, the wonderful meals, the lunches, the concerts, the gourmets for God, the guidance. I mean, you've got more than two decades going on here, but the last three years you were behind scenes, and we really appreciate that. My pleasure. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. And ne next um, you know, Sunday, about 1 o'clock, is the annual meeting, so the opportunity to elect a couple of new uh, board members. So, um, my goodness, Angel. What a joy, what a blessing. Love your music, your words today were so perfect for both sides of the message. Obviously, spirit inspired, it was dancing through you and your creation. Thanks, yep. Carissa, it's fun to have you playing with us and regularly stepping in there when our Rebecca girl is out and uh, how fun, thank you and uh, what a joy. And speaking of joy, Audra, always appreciate the joy you bring and the love you bring us all. And, um, and great reading today. Oh, my goodness. What an author you picked. Yeah, he's just brilliant. Um, actually, what I want to share with that, though, you know, um, is that you can get those online every day. That book that she read from today, The Joyous Living Journal, I want to gift that to you. Um, every day, I'll send it to your email. All you have, inside the Sunday program, if you want the daily inspirations from me that are coming from that book this year, just fill that out and let us know. If you want to be part of the podcast, taking this message, it doesn't cost anything to listen to it later in the week or to share it with the world, sign up for that. You know, watch it live stream. There are so many ways to get this message off our campus because we're dealing in the realm of consciousness and ways in which it gets delivered now. So feel free to enjoy the, the many different ways in which it's going. So um, 
With that, I was in the middle of my thank yous. I got interrupted uh, but by myself. <laughs> anyway, Ed, thank you for the sound. Marv, thank you uh, for the videos. <laughs> know that there's uh, CDs available if you want one that way. Uh, and a wonderful uh, film crew, just thank you so much for week after week being here, catching this, sharing it with the world, whether you're behind the camera or behind the wall editing, it's making a difference. And looking forward to exercising and stretching your talents with our uh, telethon, the new thoughtathon on February 17th. We're going to have you all over this place on that Sunday afternoon. So um, everybody, plan to hang out and be part of the telethon or the new thoughtathon. It, it is really going to showcase like an open house what Seaside is with the neighborhood with our family because a lot of people don't know hey where is it you guys give or hey you know what, what are the different kind of ministries and we're going to catch that live and also we're going to have people call in or we're going to call out and um, and ask for support because we have a great budget for this year but uh, we could use some help in uh, the first quarter and so the telethon's a fun way to to do that so plan to stick around on the 17th and be part of that and film crew my fingers are no I'm knowing no for cross fingers <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, God's got it handled through you guys. Um, yeah, so anyway, also classes. This is the week. They, they've begun. So come on out if you haven't done the basics. The foundation class, Tuesday nights. Come be part of that. Would love to share with you. You know, this ants that's called the negative talk. I'm, we, that's one of the assignments we do in classes is to catch our, our self-talk and be able to shift that. Um, also, more, Kathy Hearn. Is, you want some deep mysticism? Emma Kurz Hopkins, Thursday nights. Dr. Kathy Hearn. You want to have in tuition like a whale, then join Ida and, uh, and her. There's just so many offerings you need to, not need, but want to take a look at the program, see what's going on. But what I want to do is talk to our young ones right now and just see how your morning was. Yes. Yes. Anybody want to talk? Yeah. Uh, wait. Okay. I don't need to. All right. <laughs> That is your brilliance. Hey, would you like to say something, Super One? Nope. Would you like to say something? Um, I'm happy to be here, and yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're happy you're here. Hey, let's say our affirmation for our children, and that is, we see you, we love you, and we support you in your magnificence. All right, so... Um, let's see, I'm going to pray. I know we got food trucks waiting for us with gluten-free, organic, earthy, groovy, natural food that tastes good. And uh, so and you can join us in the gardens, you can join us inside. Um, and I want to invite any of our religious science practitioners that are here to stand at this time. And I just want all of you to know that all the practitioners are meeting after service today to vision, to catch a greater vision, a seaside, of their personal practice, a spirit in their life. And so there's always work going on with these individuals to help that vibration of healing at seaside. And so we invite them to stand and just feel that upliftment. You can feel that power, and that presence, and that life that is moving right here. For that infinite, all-knowing, infinite expression of the divine, that birth us into expression, into form, into manifestation is the very life that is the circulation of our being, it is the very breath that breathed us into motion. It is that wind against the face delivering that quiet message that stirs our soul and spirit to remember the truth of being. For in the beginning was spirit, it is infinite, and it heals and it knows just what to do. And so as I allow myself to be receptive to that greater intelligence, that greater vision of the divine that touches down, feel it and sense it and know that it brings with it in this quiet space an inner urge and inner understanding that transforms, transcends, transfigurates. It brings an emergence, an evolution, a transformation, a shift because the consciousness is opened and the light is entered and healing is so. For the Spirit of God is and we are each part of that. And so I come to recognize in this moment the profound power of the divine that is seeking to express in our individual lives to bring about the healing and the wholeness and the perfect vibration of oneness.
And it is in this place that life lines up in a way that is profoundly correct and right. Even if I did not see it in the moment, I was caught up in that race, that rat race, with that aggravation or aggression, I now am able to let go and forgive the self and open up to that greater picture of wholeness that expresses as attitude and personality and, and the physical body responds, the innate blueprint in every cell responds to its, its wholeness. There is life that knows how to dance as me, as you. I need not direct that intelligence that guides the universe. I am one with nature. I am one with that life that knows. So I get my littleness, my little-mindedness, my fears, my concerns, my human conditional thinking out of the way, and I become that place where spirit expresses, and it's in this divine expression, this resonant movement, that anything unlike it falls away, it dissolves into the nothing from which it came and what remains is the wonderful conduit of your being that can bring this joy, this dharma, this passion into life. Live a life with fulfillment and success and creativity and all the abundance to support those emerging ideas. For every idea brings with it the ways and the means that are the highest and best for all concerned. And so with joy and courageousness, I embrace that higher vision that the quiet whisper touches my soul with that is mine to do here. And in this, the relationship come together, the connections unfold, the intimacy and expresses, honesty is known, love is seen and felt. There's something good that's going on in this moment within this space. There's healing that is going on right here, right now. Claim it and say yes to it. Take whatever that human condition is you may be working on in your life with a constriction or a fear or a concern and just allow spirit to have it. Because the way it works is through you with the higher vision that fall, comes through the subjective and it knows how to create. For the way and the power of healing lies not with you, but through that power that moves as you. So grateful to know good is going on here and now in this moment. That spirit is having its way as our very life. And I just say thank you for the emergence of greater good, greater success. That Seaside this year is on a beautiful track, that it is growing, that it is evolving, that it is emerging, that is fulfilling the vision for which it has been called. And I'm grateful, thankful. That spirit is that I am. So I let go. I believe with an unshakable conviction in the divine right action of life itself. So it is. So Amen. It is. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself. I didn't know the grace of God. I didn't know the love of God was in hell. But now I can say if you are discouraged, struggling just to make it through another day, you've got to let it go. you have to say I release and I let go let the spirit run my life I am free and it's open wide yes I'm only here for God no more struggle no more strife with my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free. Yes, I'm only here for God. Let me hear you see side.
And our affirmation is a long one today, so get ready. It's I boldly change my thinking and now experience my greater good. Together, I boldly change my thinking and now experience my greater good. Touch your heart and say it again. I boldly change my thinking and now experience my greater good. One more time now that you got it. I boldly change my thinking and now experience my greater good. And our song of grace. I'm living in love. I'm living in peace. I'm living my life for what I believe. The joys and through fears in this world I walk. God's grace shines on me and it shines on us all. I'm living in grace. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. We're living in love. We're living in peace. United we stand as one family. We honor all truth as together we walk. God's grace through through me and it moves through us all we are living 